guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's you know, sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you know, the Let's Play episode of Santa Lucia, Nate's Path. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> of course, darling. Nate and I start making our way for the exit opposite the direction Chris and Shay went. I wave goodbye to Karina and Carlos. Karina waves back and watches us leave, while Carlos gives a cursory nod and returns to his phone. I can tell Nate's excited. He keeps scampering off ahead of me, which makes me have to pick up the pace in order to keep up. I'm not quite sure how he managed to do it, but he made this whole drama class thing sound kind of cool. I wonder if they'd be willing to accept someone who has zero experience in the field. You keeping up, Ben? Yeah, no problem. He smiles and tilts his head before turning back around. Damn, he's really cute, and I'm sure he knows it. It's going to be weird sitting in on this meeting, though. Knowing I'm gonna be around a celebrity like Candace uh, really makes me really makes me nervous for some reason. She hasn't exactly been the most welcoming person either, from what I can tell with my brief meeting with her. Well, I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. Spending more time with Nate is always fun in any case. We make our way to the theater through the dispersing crowds. There's more people walking around than usual. They probably lingered around after the vigil or something. I feel a tug on my hand as Nate points towards the theater. We're going into the side entrance. There's a side entrance? Yeah, that's where all the classrooms are. Follow me. He leads me off to the opposite side of the building from the shortcut alley. There's a small alcove with steps leading up to the doorway that has the words Drama Department written on it. Once inside, he leads me down a dimly lit hallway into a large room. It's an unexpected sight, to say the least. Man, how can they fit a large rehearsal hall in a building that already houses such a big theater? Towards the stage in the center, people have already started to gather. I can't say I recognize very many of them. I took up my shirt. Here I was expecting a small group or something. I already knew about a couple of them, but it should have been but it should have been obvious to me that the troop would have been a lot bigger. Oh well, I'm here to support Nate. I'll just sit somewhere in the middle and uh, take it all in. How's it going, my lovelies? He holds his arms out in a wide, welcoming gesture. Within seconds, the whole room has turned to, to stare at Nate and I. Of course he'd make a grand entrance. Sup, Nate? hey -o. To my surprise, they're greeted with almost equal grandiosity by the other members of the troop. Is this a theater kind of kid thing, or are they all just trying to match his intensity? Nate points at a row of nearby seats. We can sit here before the meeting starts. Are you sure they don't mind me being here? I'm starting to have second thoughts about this. Of course not, silly. He shakes his head vehemently. It's not like you'd be the only guest here. Some of the others bring, your, bring their friends, too. Did you forget we're all actors here? Our souls burn with the collective passion for the stage. We all strive to achieve a common goal. Nate twirls around in place. To entertain our audience. He puts a hand over his chest as he reaches out with the other. <laughs> Before sitting back down with a wink, I can't help but chuckle at the scene. All right, if you say so. You're a difficult person to miss, Moretti. Nate turns around to face the newcomer with a wide grin. Like you know. Hmm. All right. Ah, yes, the work is still the work, work in progress, girl. Isn't that what every actor wants, Candace? To burn like the brightest of flames, like the most brilliant of all phoenixes. Oh boy, here he goes again. I sink a little lower in my seat. Lioness crosses her arms, smiling back at the fox. You forget a phoenix burns brightest just before it dies. Though, I suppose burning yourself out does sound like something you'd do. Her words hang in the air, almost sounding malicious. Is, is this a fight? Not to worry, darling. He flutters his eyes and puts a fist up to his chest. Though, my station might not be as prestigious as yours, though I may end up as ashes someday, I will always find a way to rise again. He flaps his arms as majestically as he can. Is he... Trying to look like a bird? God, I can't help but sink further into my chair. The secondhand embarrassment is strong right now. You're certainly something, Nate. Candace chuckles at the not so majestic Phoenix interpretation. Is is it still secondhand embarrassment and the first party doesn't seem to know what embarrassment is? What can I say? Life is but a play. Candace sits next to Nate as an animated discussion erupts between them. I didn't expect to be in such a but such a third wheel here. As far as I can tell, they're talking about the big play coming up. It feels rude of me to eavesdrop, so I try my best to tear my attention away from the two. 
Oh, I swivel around in my seat, glancing around the room. People have been slowly trickling in ever since we arrived, and now it seems the place is half full. They told me some of the others brought friends, too. I wonder what the actual ratio is. I spot someone sitting a few rows ahead of us. He's turned around and staring at... Me? Or maybe it's Nate. Ah, yay, she got updated, I think. The girl next to him turns around as well. Wait a second, I think I recognize those two. They're Nate's classmates, aren't they? Kind of weird they're just sitting there staring at him. Oh well, not really my problem. Ah, I rest my hands behind my head as I sink deeper into the seat. Might be here for a while. Everything okay there, Ben? Oof, didn't think my sigh was that loud. Both of them are looking over at me now. Nate seems amused, but Candace, well, she's a hard one to read. Yeah, I'm fine. There's a lot more people here than I expected. No idea how you guys managed to do anything in front of such large crowds. And not much of a public speaker, huh? There we go. I wouldn't say that. I can handle speeches in class fine enough, but not really to a room this size. <laughs> I make a grimace to convey what I mean. That's a tad beyond me. That's totally normal. Nobody is born ready for the stage. You have to work at it. Ain't that right, darling? He turns to address Candace, who scoffs in response. When you're from a family line like mine, well, you don't exactly have a choice. She folds her arms as she speaks. I still can't quite tell how she feels about me. Regardless, Nate's right. The only way to get good at something is to be okay with being bad at it for a while. And that includes stage fright. Mm-hmm. You've got to learn to see the different, the audience, the audience differently too. Is that the whole "imagine the audience is naked" thing? I think that would only distract me. <laughs> Nate chuckles and shakes his head. Of course not, silly. You just have to think of the audience as being participants in the play. In a way, it's like a big conversation between you and them. I raise an eyebrow, hearing that. Granted, I'm not well versed in the drama scene, but I've never heard of that before. Judging by the way Candace is listening, it seems she's interested in hearing his perspective on things too. It's kind of like you're asking... <clears throat> Nate is interrupted by someone standing next to Candace. Oh, hey there, Neal. His fan, he fans his fingers at him. Neal, however, only raises his hand back. He turns his attention to Candace as a smile forms on his lips. Hey, Candace. The meeting's about to start. I was thinking we could, like, uh, find seats together. Candace stares blankly at him for a second before standing up. Yeah, good idea. You coming, Nate? Neal's shoulders deflate as she says that. Yes, I'll be right there. He turns around to face me. Well, I'll be right, I'll be back in a bit. <sighs> Excuse me. Are you sure you want to stay for it? You don't, are you sure you want to stay for this? Yeah, no worries. I'm here to cheer you on after all. <laughs> I'll see you when you're done. Okay. He flashes a toothy grin at me before chasing after the others. Damn, it's so cute. Huh. Neal was obviously displeased with the arrangement they made, but it doesn't seem Nate noticed. Candace seems pretty oblivious to it, too. Or maybe she's just used to it. I watched them as they all sit down in the group next to that other girl I saw. I think her name was Daddy, right? She's staring daggers at Neal right now. <laughs> That's rough, bud. Maybe you should start thinking about the people who, who are in your league. Unlike me. I watch as the rest of the drama class just gathers on stage. There's a lot more of them than I expected. Maybe two dozen or so? Once they're all gathered, the professor stands and rings what looks like a big triangle. Silence falls in the theater as they begin their roll call. Second now. The two of us climb the stairs to the third to the third for the third floor of the dorm building. I guess this is it, huh? I guess this is it, huh? You say it with such finality. It's not like this is the last time we're ever going to see each other, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Man, I just can't keep my thoughts straight when I'm around him. Anyway, thank you for being there for me, darling. No problem. I had fun. I still don't know what play they're, per they're, what play they're performing. It is a silent vote as to which one the group wants to do. And Nate being Nate, he refuses to tell me until the time is right. I'll see you later. Good night, Ben. He waves at me as he quickly ascends the staircase. Huh. He's so much like Eric, it's kind of uncanny. I wish I could get my feelings under control. It's not, like I've, it's not like I've got a chance with him, after all. He's too far out of my league. I should probably just... 
Give it up. September 13th, 2018. And here we go. This should be the last one. I pull out another book from the shelf and add it to the growing pile on the table nearby. Man, how many analyses do you need to do just for one book? This assignment's a pain in the ass. I was relieved when I first saw the novel we were assigned. It's really short and doesn't have any complicated language. But I swear, all the essays on it are longer than the book itself. I let out a sigh, rubbing my eyes with my fingers. It's not that I'm bad at the class or anything. I just can't say I care enough about the books we're reading. Not like there's anything I can do about it anyway. Just put your head to the grindstone and get this over with ASAP, Rivers. Ah! There's no way I can wrap my arms around all these tomes. My backpack will probably collapse if I try to leave her with them, too. Well, I guess working here in the library is better than nothing. Plus, I won't have to worry about wasting my whole evening procrastinating on my laptop. I take a look around me. There's not that many people here, but there's at least one sitting at each table. How annoying. Call me antisocial, but I don't feel like sitting next to somebody I don't know. Hmm. I guess I could always try the secret nook. I wonder how secret it really is now that we're almost two weeks into the school year. Hopefully nobody's there. I make my way across the library, all the while crossing my fingers hoping I'll find the nook empty. I walk past the endless bookshelves and tables, navigating the maze and aisles. I take one final turn and... Crap. There's someone there, which makes my heart drop. The sound of pages turning tells me all I need to know. Still, I want to know who the bastard who took my special place is. I peek my head inside. And my heart leaps when I recognize who's in there. Nate! Of course he'd be here. This is a special spot, too, and he loves reading. He looks up from the book his nose is buried in. Ben, what a nice surprise! Oh, it is, in fact, coffee time. I step inside while carrying half the pile of books with me. Mind if I join you? Not at all. <laughs> with a heavy thud, I place the pile down on the table in front of the sofa I like to sit on. I like to sit in. I'll be right back. I need to grab the rest of these tomes. Take your time. It takes three trips, uh, three trips and all to migrate the stack from one place to the next. Looks like you're doing some heavy reading. Huh, you can say that. This is for our literature assignment tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's what I'm about to work on, too. The Stranger by Camus, right? I nod while grabbing one of, my, one of the many volumes in front of me. Yeah, that's the one. I read it, and I thought I understood it, but I can't quite imagine writing this many pages on it. I raised the book I just grabbed with immense difficulty. So, I'm guessing either I didn't get it, or they are really padding things out for clout. Nate chuckles at my exasperated remark. Well, a lot of them talk about more than just this one book. They analyze within the context of the body of the work an author produ the author produced, as well as the world he lived in. You can introduce those elements in your essay, but I don't think that was part of the assignment. In fact, looking at these analyses, you might have overdid it, darling. Yeah, don't say that. It took hours collecting these damn things. <laughs> I flip open the book I'm holding and land on a random page as Nate turns his attention back to his. I didn't think it was possible to write with a font this small. Did you enjoy the book, by the way? All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!